Yeah, so we have a question which we answered this for the first part last week, but we decided since it's such a, you know, quite a big question, we have a lot to answer on it, we've decided to split it into two parts. So the question's from Hiroshi asking, what would be a good two to three days itinerary for each region of New Zealand? Thank you. And for this video, we're going to be going on the South Island of New Zealand. Yep. All right, should we get the map out? The trusty map. Do you have the pens? Yes, of course I have the pens. All right, so um, we are, so first up, we are not going to follow the basic, like the official geographical regions of New Zealand. We're just going to go through that kind of like the main touristic areas and give you two or three activities that we would love to do around this area, just for you to know what to do with your two or three days in each region. So let's start with the top of the North Island. So this includes the town of Blenheim, Picton, and Nelson right here. All right, so um, Blenheim and Picton, they're pretty close together, these two towns. Picton's sort of known to be the place where you take the ferry to get between the North Island and the South Island. Well, there is more to do there. But there is more to do there. Um, it's actually part of a place called the Marlborough Sounds, um, which has quite a lot of really cool things to do. There's various boat tours you can do, um, sort of dolphin swimming tours you can take there, kayaking. Um, and there's also uh, the Queen Charlotte Track, which is a multi day hike and a really good alternative to do for one of the great walks if you want to do a multi-day hiking trail but stay in some maybe a little bit nicer accommodation than staying in huts and stuff that is a good alternative in Blenheim you can do various winery tours and, and chocolate tasting in Ma and cho Macana chocolate factory yep so don't don't miss it and then in Nelson um, the city itself uh, there's you can go and hike to the center of New Zealand um, and there's various different food related things you can do there as well or you can take um, sort of a day trip to the Abel Tasman National Park but because it's next destination we have Golden Bay and the Abel Tasman National Park right here what would you do here for two, three days? Okay, so for the Abel Tasman National Park, that is where actually one of the great walks of New Zealand is located, the Abel Tasman Coastal Track. It's a multi-day trail, but you can sort of make it as long or short as you like because there are water taxis that take you from various places along the coast so that's pretty cool you can do sailing there you can do kayaking tours and um, but if you want to explore a little bit further on this side which is more where golden bay is and takaka is the main town there and um, there are various different um sort of free attractions to see there there's labyrinth rocks there's waterfalls there's um kayaking tours to see the other side of the Abel Tasman National Park. There's a salmon farm if you want to fish for salmon. Um, and yeah. There's a labyrinth of rock at some point. I said the labyrinth rock. Oh yeah, you yeah. did. Okay. So then you can drive through the Nelson Lake and then you can explore the top of the West Coast. I'm just going to stop before the glacier country is here. Okay. There you go. So you get two, three days to explore the West Coast. Okay. So um, sort of up north of the west coast you have a place called Westport which is known for um, for its surfing is a really good place for surfing on the South Island there's a few bike trails and that sort of thing there as well and there's the coal town museum so if you want to learn about the coal mining history of the west coast of the South Island that is the place to go I'm just gonna let Laura think for one second what I tell you guys that every activities we talk to uh, you guys about right now we have a video of that on this channel we've done all the activities we mentioned and we have video there so that was doing something that we call new zealand's biggest gap here when we challenged ourselves to do 365 activities around new zealand in only 365 days there is a playlist in the channel and since you guys have plenty of spare time at the moment maybe you want to check this one out and start playing from day mm -hmm. one and let it go it's pretty nuts there's a lot hap happens Anyway, um, so yeah, we were at Westport. What else would you do in your two, three days on the West well, Coast? Well, if you travel south, you can go to the town of Greymouth, which is the largest town on the West Coast. There you can do some really awesome four-wheel drive or like 
they're four wheel buggy sort of um, tours. You self drive it yourself, so it's really cool. Um, there's quad biking tours as well in don't the same place. Don't turn it they don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a place called On Your Bike. Yep. You can also do a brewery tour at the Monteith's Brewery in Greymouth as well. The brewery tour only takes about 30, 45 minutes, so you can yeah. do that after, after any other activity you've done. Moving down a little bit further south, you can go to the town of Hokitika, which is known for its greenstone carving. You can spend the whole day doing a green greenstone carving workshop there as well to make your own sort of pendants that you can take home with you, which is really cool. Um, you can also visit a place called Hokitika Gorge, which is famous for its super blue waters, beautiful sort of river gorge landscape. There's a short walk to check that out. Then if you move a little further south, you can go to Puna Kaiki, which is famous for its pancake rocks. Just a short walk to check out some stacked limestone formations, which look like pancakes, which is pretty cool. Um, and then is Franz Joseph going to be a separate yeah. location? And then we are moving on to Glacier Country. So in Glacier Country, we have Franz Joseph and Fox Glacier. And we even have the town of Haast down there, all the way at the bottom. Yep, so Franz Josef and Fox Glacier both offer quite similar things in terms of their activities because Franz Josef is famous for the Franz Josef Glacier and Fox, it, well, the town of Fox Glacier is famous for the Fox Glacier. So both of these towns, they're only 20 minutes apart, so you basically choose whichever one. You, you know, appeals more to you, but they both offer heli hiking, which takes you onto the glacier in a helicopter and you go on a glacier hiking tour with the, your crampons on. You have a guide to show you around the glacier. It's a really awesome and different experience. You get to go through ice caves and that sort of thing, which is really cool. Um, alternatively, you can do skydiving there. It's a really scenic place, probably one of the most scenic places to do skydiving in New Zealand if you want to see both. Um, both mountains and sea and everything in between all of that is there which is pretty cool as well and then when you get to Haast it's kind of a really sort of remote feeling place of New Zealand you can take jet boat tours to go into the Mount Aspiring National Park and see some amazing wilderness um, and yeah but you can also go and um, there's various beaches and various walks to do there and it's famous for white bait fishing um, which is yeah fishing for little baby fish and they sell them in bags <laughs> you can always it's a, it's a New Zealand speciality so it's a place to go and check that out and try that for yourself sorry guys I thought Laura was done so I started drawing this one but this <laughs> is the Queenstown area and um, yeah, so this includes Wanaka, Queenstown, Arrow Town. So there is quite a, a bunch of stuff here. Um, and it's kind of the gateway to quite a few extra activities. So we think it's, it's an area to actually spend two, three days and maybe even a little bit more because you can even escape and go to the Fjordland National Park. Yeah, so um, what Robin's referring to mainly is from Queenstown, you can do bus or um, flights to Milford Sound, which um, if you haven't heard, it's a beautiful fjordland, well, fjord landscape, um, which is basically like huge mountains towering from the from the water of the coast. Um, it's just, yeah, full of waterfalls. It's real surreal landscape. Um, so yeah, they do sort of day tours um, from Queenstown to go check that out. But also in Queenstown and the Wanaka area, you can do skydiving, you can do canyoning, bungee jumping. Snowboarding, um, skiing. Snowboarding and skiing in winter. You can do whitewater rafting more in summer. Um, there's, it's known as the adventure capital of the, well, of the world of New Zealand, of everything. So any adventure activity you can think of, they probably do in Queenstown. Um, but it's also known for its beautiful scenery, also a wine region as well. So you can do wine tours. Um, really, there's a whole lot to do in Queenstown. So you'll have to check some of our videos on YouTube. We've got loads of activity examples of what you can do in, uh, in Queenstown. So yeah, that's basically Queenstown. So the best way to explore the Fjordland area, which is this area right here, basically here, the best way to explore this area is usually from Queenstown. But all of this area here is called the Southland, and it's your gateway to Stewart Island here, which is absolutely awesome. And there is also a few awesome things to do here. I'm just letting the cat things out, just so you know. Oh, yep. yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So in Southland, Southland. Um, the one of the main cities there is in Cargill. 
Um, so there you can do, uh, what can you do in Invercargill? You can go, well, there's some surfing tours yeah, at a place called really awesome River, Riverton, I think it's yeah. called. Um, in Invercargill, there's also a chocolate factory making um, sort of experiences. You can make your own chocolate there. There's the Bill Richardson Transport World, if you want to see one of the, well, it's one of the largest collections of vehicles I've ever seen, which is pretty cool. There's also some caves to explore. Yep, there's um, the... Clifton Caves, um, so that's like a self-guided cave um, experience you can that do. That means you are on your own, so it you better you're be prepared. on your own, but yeah, you just basically have to follow some markers through a cave, which does take you quite a while. I think it takes you maybe like an hour to two hours to get through this cave network, which is really, really fun. When we did it and we filmed, we actually didn't realize it would be that long, and with the filming, it takes way longer. So we spent a good more than half a day down in those caves, a bit... <laughs> It, it was a bit eerie at some point. Yeah. And um, there's also the town of Gore, which um, is known as the brown trout capital of New Zealand. So if you're into fishing and fly yeah. fishing, that is the place to go. Um, but yeah. the thing that we we love the most about Southland is Stewart Island, which is this extra island at the bottom of the South Island. You can take a ferry or a flight there and stay there um, a few days. Um, and over there, there's a place called Ulva Island. Um, and over there, it's a bird sanctuary. So you can do a few short walks around the island and see loads of different birds. It's unlike anywhere I've seen. Um, there's kiwi birds just sort of out in the daytime, sort of wandering the island. There's beautiful parrots and things like that there as well. So yeah, if you're into wildlife in the wilderness, Stewart Island is definitely a really cool place to check out. Just so you guys know, when uh, people ask us what our favorite activities to do around New Zealand, very often Nora picks Ulva Island, which is just off the shore of Stewart Island, as one of her favorite activities to do in the country. It is, yeah. So the next thing that we're going to be picking right here is, is a very small one, but it's the Catlins. It's actually way smaller than that, I think it's just there. Um, so it's the Catlins here. Just because there is really a lot to do in the Catlins, it's a great place to do a two to three days road trip. And the question was, what do I do during two or three days road trip around the, you know, in each region? You should take a road trip for two or three days in the Catlins. Yes, so in the Catlin, Catlins, it's really awesome because it's actually full of free activities to do. There's various short walks to waterfalls. Um, there's about three or four different waterfalls that you can check out in the Catlins. Um, there's also some really stunning coastline and beaches. Um, and many of those beaches are actually inhabited by really interesting wildlife like sea lions, um, New Zealand fur seals and penguins as well. So while you're traveling around, you're quite likely to see some wildlife along the way too, which is really awesome. And then there's various different other short walks to some mirror lakes, for instance, Wil Wilkie's lakes, um, I'm thinking of. Um, and yeah, that's the Catlins. All right, so we're going through the big uh, Otago Peninsula and uh, Needham areas right here. All right, so um, on the Otago Peninsula, which is just right, right near Dunedin. Just so you know, some people are waiting for Otago and Dunedin. Uh, the, <laughs> yeah. the Engineer 77 is uh, eager to hear what you have to say about the Otago okay. Peninsula and Dunedin. Okay, so starting with the Otago Peninsula, that is also a really awesome place for wildlife. Um, there's various wildlife tours you can take there to sort of private conservation lands to actually get some really good viewings of yellow eye penguins, blue penguins, royal al well, are they called royal albatross? Yes, they are. Yeah, royal albatross, which are the largest types of seabirds in the world. They're really amazing to see up close. There's also, you can also see sea lions, seals. So if you are really into wildlife, we absolutely recommend going to the Otago Peninsula to do some of the wildlife tours there. But in Dunedin itself, um, which is quite a large city in New Zealand, um, you can go to various really cool museums. They have the Otago Museum, which has various different um, sort of you know, history of New Zealand and the history of the Maori history. There's a lot about the settlers as well. Yeah, there's the to uh, Toitu Toi Museum, which is about the early settlers of the region, which is quite quite an interesting museum too. Yeah. Um, but uh, Dunedin's also known for its architecture because it's very different to elsewhere in New Zealand. They have the railway station, which is a good photo opportunity there and you, even the center of the city is the octagon yeah which is such a weird it's, <laughs> it's interesting to see the city center being a massive well octagonal shape where yeah. all the buses are going it's still bustling it's it's quite it's quite cool yeah 
I think that's probably enough yeah. to wrap up Dunedin. Yep. All right. So we're moving on. Well, we're going to go all the central kind of south and we're going to go all the way close to Christchurch, but not just yet. Yeah. So usually when you're traveling in this area, a lot of people like to stop at places like um, Mount Cook. Mount Cook is the um, largest, well, the highest mountain in New Zealand. And in that area, it's a really good place to explore some of the Southern Alps scenery. And there's various ways to do that. There are scenic flights you can take from Mount Cook Village or from nearby Lake Tekapo. You can also do some heli hiking on glaciers again. So if you missed out on this side in the West Coast, you can you have another opportunity at Mount Cook. There's loads of different hikes you can do here. One of the most um, famous ones is the Hooker Valley um, hike, which can take you to a, um, a glacier terminal lake, which is pretty cool as well. Really a lot of stuff uh, to do there. And it's, that area is more about the alpine scenery, if you want to get more of that in there. Also in the area is Lake Tekapo, which is um, famous for just its scenery, its beautiful turquoise lake. There's some hot pools there. I just want to stress one thing about Lake Tekapo. You do not need to spend one night here. So many yeah. people just plan like to spend a night there and then you can, it's just a photo of, just take your pictures and keep on moving. There is very little amount of accommodation available in Lake Tekapo. So you are kind of, you know, making it harder for yourself to travel there. So I think just you yeah. know, definitely a pit stop, amazing pit stop, yeah. definitely but not ne necessary to spend the night there. And just before, so just north of um, of Lake Tekapo, as you're traveling towards Christchurch, it's worth stopping in a town called Geraldine. Here, there's um, one of the probably most extreme whitewater rafting tours you can do at Rangitata Rafts. One of my favorite activities in the country. Yeah, and there's also the Peel Forest horse trekking, so you can do some horse trekking in some pretty awesome scenery and up some mountains, that sort of thing. So that's always worth checking out as well. All right, then we have the Christchurch and uh, Banks Peninsula area. Yep, so Christchurch is the largest city in the South Island. It has an interesting history because there were some earthquakes there quite a few years ago, which um, there's various museum displays and stuff like that at the Canterbury Museum you can check out at Quake City, which I think is part of the Canterbury Museum now. Um, there's, it's also known as the Garden City, so you can check out some gardens, um, beautiful botanic gardens in Christchurch as well. And it's a good place to stock up because it's a city, so if you need yeah. to stock up for the rest of your road trip, good place to go there as well. But we are really enthusiastic about Akaroa, which is on the Banks Peninsula, and it's this sort of bulge here on the side of the South Island. Um, again, really famous for its wildlife. They have one of the largest little blue penguin colonies there, and they do tours at that area. There's various different boat tours you can do to see some of the really interesting um, formations because the Akaro Harbour actually what used to be an ancient volcano, which is pretty cool. Well, it is an ancient volcano. Um, and you can see various, um, you can do some uh, swimming with some of the world's smallest species of dolphins, which is pretty cool as well. I think that's enough yeah. for that. All right. And then basically we have the Kaikura area. What can we do in Kaikura? Uh, in Kaikoura, again, famous for its marine wildlife. So you can do whale watching there, which is available all year round. You can do it by flights, scenic flights over the whales, which is really cool. Or you can do it by boat. There's dolphin swimming. There's seal swimming, which is one of Robin's favorite activities to do in the South Island. Um, and there's also albatross boat tours. So you can get real close to some albatross on the water. Um, and yeah, there's, there's um, yeah all sorts yeah there's really a ton of activities in kaikura and again every single activities that laura mentioned today we have a video of it on this channel so if you want to see if it's kind of your thing or if it's not check out the video and see you know if you want to do that or not yeah um so i hope that this video was really useful to you guys um that is basically a two to three days road trip in each of the kind of tourist region of the south island of new zealand if you do have some follow-up questions put them in the comments below if you do find that useful uh, make sure to click like or subscribe it's a great way for you to say thank you for all the hard work and it's free to do so that's pretty awesome and uh, yeah thank you very much for watching